Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing with you guys some tips on Dirty Bird Camp Out West and talking about their lineup. For those that don't know me, my name is Aid. I'm a music festival content creator and I will not be attending Dirty Bird Camp Out this year. However, when I went back in 2019, it was a really awesome experience. And so in today's video, I just wanted to talk about some things to expect and know about this festival as well as talk about the lineup. So without further ado, let's get into this video. If you do like today's video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to vibe with me. Like I said, I went back in 2019. So I will also be linking some videos down in the description below as well as some videos up here sharing some vlogs from that festival that way you can see what the experience was like when I went in 2019. I did do a review of this festival back in 2019 that is no longer on my channel. I took that video down just because I feel like there were some factors that I didn't really fully talk about that kind of impacted my festival experience that I'll get a little bit more into when I'm giving some tips and things like that. So I just wanted to clear the air on that. I did take that video down, but I'm hoping to give you guys some tips in case you guys are planning on going to this festival and things to expect and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get into it. Kicking it off with getting to and from this festival. So I traveled from Austin, Texas to go to Dirty Bird Camp Out. We flew into Oakland and then we took the camp bus, which took off from the Oakland airport and took us to the festival to and from. That was a really great way to get to and from the festival and not having to worry about renting a car and everything like that. And then we did do a pre setup tent option. However, I did look on that website and it doesn't look like that's available this year. It looks like that you are just going to be doing regular tent camping or car camping basically or unless you have an RV camping or stuff like that. I noticed that they did group camping as well which I didn't think they have offered before and then they also have more of a bougier camping glamping experience if that is suited for you. However, I think that is also sold out at this point. So if you still have not figured out your travel plans and whatnot, if you need to fly, you can fly into Oakland and take that shuttle bus and then maybe just make sure that you have all your camping gear that you potentially might need for the event. When we took the camp bus, they did stop at a grocery store for us to get food and drinks and stuff like that. So I felt like that was very much worth it. However, if you need stuff like an easy up and stuff like that, it might be a little bit hard to bring because you're only allowed an item for below and an item to bring with you on the bus. So just think about that when you are packing. And maybe if you happen to know people going to the festival, you guys could all camp together or something like that too. If you would prefer not to shuttle and have more control of your camping experience than maybe renting a car, going to Walmart, picking up your camp gear and stuff could work for that as well. I have done a video on how to camp at a music festival that's out of state that I will link up here for you guys if you're wondering how to actually do this and that whole process. Definitely check out that video. Overall, I really did enjoy this venue. It did definitely give the adult summer camp vibes that, that Dirty Bird Camp Out is known for and I really liked how everything was spaced out. One of the things I will recommend is that it is a lot of walking. It's also very dirty and dusty. So definitely bring shoes that you don't really care about and that are super comfortable for you. I also recommend some type of headlight or flashlight at nighttime because in the campgrounds, things are not really well lit. So definitely bring a flashlight of some sort with her when you're walking around at nighttime because it was definitely very dark if there wasn't any flashlights or anything around. So that's definitely something I recommend. But overall, I thought the venue was really great. There was a little bit of security between the campgrounds and the actual festival. I'm curious if that will still be there. If that's the case, case, then definitely think about going to a set that you want to see maybe 30 minutes to an hour beforehand, just so you don't go at a really busy time and potentially miss out on the artists that you wanted to see. I would also check to make sure what the guidelines are for inside the festival versus in the campgrounds, because sometimes the things that are allowed in the campgrounds aren't allowed inside the festival. So definitely just double check on that. As for weather, back in 2019, the weather was great. I thought during the day it was nice and warm and the outfit Outfits were really fun that we could wear. And then at nighttime, it did cool down a little bit. So I would go back and put some sweatpants or a jacket on just to get a little bit more comfortable and then go back out on the dance floor. But I really liked the weather. I didn't think it was too hot or too cold at nighttime. It was perfect. I didn't feel like I was really cold at nighttime. And we had, you know, our sleeping bags and like blankets and sweatshirts and stuff like that. But I didn't really feel like I was freezing at nighttime. Another thing I'll also mention to pack is some earplugs for when you want to sleep just because it can get a little loud at nighttime. If you're someone that's maybe traveling from the East Coast or even from Texas or somewhere in the middle of the country, you might deal with some issues with the time change. I know for me, I got super tired at like 
10 o'clock, even midnight, just because of the time difference. I was two hours behind essentially. So it definitely took some time for my body clock to adjust. So maybe just think about that if you need to just have an extra little pick me up of like a five hour energy or some caffeine or something like that. Or if you need to take a power nap before you go back out for the rest of the night. I know I probably could have used a nap. However, I'm really bad when it comes to napping. <laughs> As for what to wear, this is definitely a festival that prides itself in self-expression. So I also would recommend just wearing whatever feels comfortable for you. It's a Dirty Bird event, so everyone's always expressing themselves the best way that they can. They're wearing their Dirty Bird gear. They're wearing maybe like summer camp type gear. They're dressed in sparkly kimonos and captain's hats and I just loved everyone's outfits. I feel like everyone really dressed the part for the adult summer camp vibes as well as the Dirty Bird vibes. There was a lot of Dirty Bird vibes everywhere, like everywhere you saw the egg, you know what I mean? So definitely just wear whatever feels comfortable for you. Like I said, maybe just pack some stuff in case it gets cold at night and then wear shoes that are super comfortable and can get dirty and dusty in. You can also bring the bathing suit if you wanna go into the actual water. I know some people did that. I think it was pretty cold, but you can definitely do that by all means. As for the vibe and the crowds, so this was something I mentioned in my review that got a lot of hate on. <laughs> and this is partially my fault because I went into the festival with some expectations because so many people talk so highly of Dirty Bird Camp Out. And I normally don't go into festivals with high expectations except for this festival I did. And it shot myself in the foot a little bit because I wasn't all that impressed with the crowd. And I don't know if it could have been the energy I was giving off or if there was something going on with me, maybe I was tired or maybe I wasn't approachable to some people. I don't know. I truly don't know. But the crowd just didn't really put me in awe. Like I had a great time with all my friends, but I didn't really meet anyone. Other people didn't really seem all that friendly. So I was really surprised by by the Dirty Bird crew vibe. And so that's why I put took my review down just because one, I did go in with some pretty high expectations. Two, I also don't know, like maybe the vibe that I was giving off or that my ex-partner was also giving off too. I don't really know. Or maybe I was just tired from the time change. So that's kind of why I retracted my review a little bit. I think I was expecting a little bit more from a Dirty Bird crowd just because I've been to Dirty Bird events beforehand. And I thought that it was going to be just this really amazing and welcoming experience. And everyone on that review video was like, I've met so many amazing people at Dirty Bird Camp Out. Like, I'm so sorry that that happened to you or that that was your experience. Some people were really nice about it. And they were like, I'm so sorry that you didn't get that experience that I've gotten. Some other people were not so nice and calling me out for it. But <laughs> it is what it is. What I learned from that experience is that you can just control your own festival experience and do the best you can. And hopefully that energy that you put out will bring in some people to you that you get to meet and vibe out with. I just didn't have that experience and that's totally okay. Not every festival experience is going to be like that and I recognize that. So that is pretty much it for all the tips I have about Dirty Bird Camp Out. I'm pretty sure I left out some things. So if you have any questions, definitely leave me a comment down below and I'll try my best to get to it. But without further ado, let's talk about this lineup because it is always stacked and so they're kicking it off Thursday with a pre-party with Damian Lazarus I will say I did not do the pre-party in 2019 and I kind of regret it I feel like if I would have gotten there on Thursday it would have given me just a little bit more time for my body clock to adjust because I think we flew in Friday went on the bus on Friday and then straight to the festival basically we went straight from the flight to setting up camp to getting ready for the festival and then going to the festival by like 5 p.m. basically so I definitely recommend if you can get there on Thursday to do that. And then diving into the rest of this lineup, we got Artelan. I love Artelan. I saw him at Dirty Bird Camp Out. It was a really fun set. He's always a good time. Not too familiar with Arnold and Lame. Barclay Crenshaw. So that is Claude Von Stroke's other alias that he goes by. That's actually his name. <laughs> but this is more of like his experimental type uh, alias that he does where he can experiment with whatever he wants. I love Barclay. Barclay Crenshaw sets. I think they're really fun. Boys Noise is on here. I'm not too familiar with break-ins. Carl Craig is very iconic. So that's awesome to see him on here. Cats and Dogs I've been wanting to see. I don't think I've actually ever seen them. They definitely have a really good Dirty Bird type vibe. Tubesy, I'm not too familiar with. Claude Van Stroke, the very iconic Claude Van Stroke. I think in 2019, he closed out the festival and then they did a Dirty Bird family set, which is always very fun to see. Each artist basically gets to go up and play a song. Always really fun. Codes, I've 
I think I saw codes a long time ago, but I, it's been a while since I've actually seen them. And then moving along, you know, Damian Lazarus will have another set at the festival outside of his pre-party set. DJ Heather's on here. Oh, I saw a little bit of her set at Arc Music Festival. She's one of those OG, you know, Chicago house artists. DJ Mink, same thing. Dean Ferris, hmm. Dean Ferris at a Dirty Bird camp out event would be such a vibe. I just saw him for the first time at Arc Music Festival and seeing him at Dirty Bird Camp Out would be so much fun. Gina Turner is also really great. And then Ivy Lab on here. So that's the interesting thing with Dirty Bird Camp Out is that even though it is house in techno, um, they also do kind of bridge into some bass sometimes. Like I think back in 2019, who was on the lineup? Eprom was on the lineup. So they do have some like more experimental bass type artists that get to attend and they'll usually be on the other stage. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this. There's usually two stages. There's the birdhouse stage and then there's the stage behind it, which I'm blanking on what the name is. And then I think there was another stage somewhere else. And then some people also have stages on their own little carts and stuff. I don't know. There's a lot going on. <laughs> but Ivy Lab, I actually saw at Electric Forest and they're really incredible kind of more experimental bass artists. Justin J is always a good time. Kevin Knapp, I've never seen and have wanted to. Layla Benet Benitez, I think is her name. I talked about her in the Skyline Insomniac video. Up and coming house artists that I talked about on the Skyline Insomniac lineup. Lubelski, I have never seen before. Would love to. Mary Droppins is someone to watch and I'm very excited that she's on here. I've been wanting to see her as well. She's definitely one to watch in the house genre. So definitely keep an eye on her. If you guys can go see her, definitely do it. Medicine is also really incredible, more future based type artist. Nala. Mm. This is also another girl that you need to watch. She's really incredible. I still have never seen her, but I love her just like she kind of blends between genres, but she also has these very hypnotic vocals and like just really good catchy tunes. She just came out with an EP with Claude Van Stroke that was really great. I've been wanting to see her. She's on my list. Then moving along, another one I would love to see, Rodriguez Jr. live. I missed him at Arc Music Festival. Would love to see that. Sasha Rabati. Mm. Sasha Obadi at Seismic Dance Event killed it. I saw Sasha Obadi also at Dirty Word Camp Out. It was a really good time. That was a daytime set. That was really fun. Sir mix -a -Lot's on here. Steve Darko. I don't think I've seen a full set of his. It's been a while. Subset, I actually saw open for Side Piece during S Seismic Dance Event. He's also part of Ship Fam. He had a really good set that opened up for Side Piece. Really enjoyed his set. And then the great Bingo Revival. I've never heard of, but that sounds fun. Tiga is also pretty iconic. Vanessa, our queen. We love her. Walker and Royce, always a really good time. Wyatt Marshall, I've been wanting to see. And then Yeti, which I'm pretty sure is another more experimental bass type artist. And then, yeah, plus games and activities, comedy, clots, cabin, and more. This was what I was really excited about going to Dirty Bird Camp Out, and I recommend people to do this. Go check out the activities. Like, there's so much more to this festival than just the music. So go check out the games and activities. Go watch Tug of War. Participate in Tug of War. They always have these little sports going on. Comedy. I forgot what comedians they had our year. I'm pretty sure Trevor Wallace was there, or I'm forgetting. I'm going to have to go back and look. And Claude's Cabin was really fun. He had a twerking workshop there they also did like a pageant there one of the nights i'm pretty sure the comedy was at claude's cabin too i also got my pashmina screen printed by sasha robotti so one of my pashminas has a sloth on it <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that but i got that done at dirty bird camp out and sasha robotti did it so there's always these fun like little activities to participate in that was something that i think my like introvertedness and like social anxiety -ness was like too anxious to participate in was like some of like the sports or like other their activities but now going back I'm like I should definitely do that more so if you guys do if you guys do check out Dirty Bird Camp I hope you have an amazing time let me know if you guys have any questions and comment down below who you're excited to see if you did like today's video feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to vibe with me I love you guys and I will see you in the next one bye